All right. Guten Morgen. Half a day and heck here. And why are we late today? Which just seems to be the running theme. I, I was here. I was on time. I was about to hit 1030 right on the dot. And then ding dong. And I was like, who's at my door? And it was a package delivery for HelloFresh for roommates. We're gone for the week. So I was like, I have to get this. But anyway, last time, Sherlock Holmes and Watson were trying to find Jack the Ripper. And we believe we're on his trail. I'm estimating about an hour, hour and a half. But now that I'm no longer in a rush, I'm not going to be like, <laughs> so I'm like, we can take our time. We can enjoy it. Let's go teleport to the, uh, the newsman. Newsman? Newsman. Ah, bullying is there. It won't hurt just this once. Wait, what won't hurt? Bullying? Hello, Mr. Bulling. So, did your colleague tell you about the tip? What tip? Ah, I see. I gave him an explosive tip and he went without you? Oh, that's not very sporting on his part. No doubt he took all of the credit for his discovery. You're winding me up, eh? I'm a show Bulling something to make him believe me. I'm not even five minutes in. And already, innuendo. The tip? The tip. I have this, this paper. What do you want? Paper? I'm not winding you up. The proof is that he gave me this advance on the debt. The traitor. He owes me. If I find him... Before I leave, can you do me a favor? Hmm. Heck, tell me. I'm looking for some reliable info on the murders committed in Whitechapel in the months before Polly Nichols' attack. Reliable? Ha! You really think you'll find that here? Fine. I'll be honest with you. We have folders that group the dispatches from the current year into categories. In the police law category, you'll find the transcripts of the trials and investigations that we sell to the newspapers that ask us. Perfect. Sadly, I am out of time. I'll leave you to solve it, eh? You're the detective, aren't you? <laughs> The dossiers are full of papers in dated envelopes. I can't open them. That would be too obvious. How can I tell which compartment to look in? No categories are indicated. An envelope is torn. I can tell that this dispatch contains economic information. Okay. Do I get any other hints? Oh god, what's happening now? That's a that's a wall of text. Won't let it load up. Let's see what it says. Ah, uh, Sherlock, I wonder how spicy we get today. Adobo, why are you just standing there with your cake? No, I don't care that there's extra icing. It's only red velvet, just chocolate cake with red dye. Anyway, clean up that mess you made over there. Oh God, author's note. I really don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> I feel like you were trying to make like a giant innuendo, but you just rambled and repeated things that I said about like cake facts. Watch out, baby. Watch out, watch your face. But hi, Dobo. I can. Do they really give me no hints? That's just the one letter? Oh, this has like a weird different box. Is that maybe something? Let's see. The object of the puzzle is to label each bins and find the police. Clues. Look around the room for clues on how to arrange the labels. Oh, there's clues around the room. Where? My presence on Friday evening at the club, it will be with pleasure because I must get my mind off things or risk falling into a black depression. Just imagine the new laddie still has the favors of that Janet. But you'll end up forgetting him and giving in to me because I am not lacking in ideas to get rid of her suitors. Oh my god. 
yesterday, I randomly placed a few inventions and science with politics dispatches. After all, they are always hair-brained items. Given that the compartments are one on top of the other, it could have easily passed as one of the new lad's heirs, and as t anticipated, he was called in by the boss. As soon as I have the chance, I will show him how, like in the news, everything's in the balance. He looks like a half-wit. He could easily confuse the politics with the society section on his right. And this ladder with economy, which is its neighbor. What a lovely mess. Oh, God. I don't know how an intelligent girl like Janet can like a swat. A swat? A swot. Like him, but he doesn't have much longer to smile. What is a swot? I fumbled here. It's okay. You fumbled the cake. It's fine. What is a swot? What is that? So many new words. Yeah, swot meaning? Oh, apparently it's an acronym for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I don't think that's what they meant. Uh, no, I don't want swot analysis. I just want the definition. Okay, here we go. It's a synonym for swatter. <laughs> Verb, noun, swatted, swoted, swat. Give me the d definition. There we go. To study or work hard. A student who studies assiduously, especially to the exclusion of other activities or interests. Grind. Hard study or hard work. Okay, so that's what a swote is. Hello from a puddle in the UK. Hello, Larryton. I looked up the word swote. Swat. Because new words. We expand our vocabulary. How you doing today? Heck yeah. Also, shout out to Mama Meep. It's their birthday. And obviously, without them, I wouldn't be here. Because <laughs> I, I, I exited their cake. No, they don't have a cake. You know what? Cake is for everything now. It's for the front, the back, the extension cord. We'll let you figure that one out. Cake. Swote? Studious? Clever? Yeah, that word. Larrington? I looked it up just now because I didn't know what it meant. Extension cord. Stevenson and Clow, Bill, repair the wood of the news and brief compartment. <gasps> I think it's this one then. This this little guy. News. Yeah, because you're the one with the weird wood. Well, happy birthday, Mama Meep. Yeah. She's 50-something. I don't remember her exact birthday. But I know she's 50-something. And she doesn't even look at it. She looks like 35 still. She didn't believe me. She's like, now I'm old. I'm old. And I was like, I took a photo of her and then I held up a photo from like when we first like got to the island. I was like, you see the difference? And she's like, well, I know that's me. And I was like, I th th do you see a difference? The only difference I see is you're a little more tan and have like little like little wrinkle right here. You know, when you smile, you get the little eye wrinkle. That's it. She's like, oh, I'm old. I'm like, shut your beautiful mouth. All right, more hints. More hints. I have no reason to go that way. I figure I try. Anybody got hints on their desk? Clues. Instead of just being an outright cheater. The blue envelopes from the dispatch compartment contain confidential facts that must not be discussed in the news. As a reminder, they contain the political personalities, essentially the royal family, and economic issues. This. This dispatches will be retained only to the diffuse, to be diffused when the Buckingham Palace or the ministers give us authority. Okay, there's two though. There's two with blue. So that could be it, or that could be it. Hmm. Well, how's everybody doing? I know you're in a puddle and you fumbled cake, but. Closed. How's the Wednesday treating y'all? My dear George, your little brother has had some misfortune. My first week of work was very grueling. First, I was given a spot far from the stove, and I am very cold in the morning. Next, I have to sort through the dispatches, the most tedious and boring work imaginable. Once the work is done, I must take each envelope to the journalist in question, who won't even deign to look at me. 
Finally, at the end of my third day, the boss called me to his office to give me a sermon. It seems that I had mixed up the dispatches. I was so worn out they could only protest... That could only protest half-heartedly. He gave me a second chance, so now I'm in a sticky situation. The only hopeful note comes from my colleague, Miss... Filfen? A charming young woman who is the only one to give me a smile. She helps me as much as she can and tries to prompt me regarding which compartments I should put my dispatches. Because everyone here knows the order of the sections, but no one has bothered to tell me. The lady has so much compassion and slides me notes such as politics and society are on the side. I need notes. I need notes. Eh. You know what I blame? Diggins, who provides measurements for their slice of cake. You know what? Yeah, I mean, it all started when he was like, look how big, like, actual cake, you know. And it was just like, actually, blame the person who made the cake and brought it into work. And they're the ones who started the domino effect. They're the true culprit. It's been a Wednesday. It has been a Wednesday. All right, so let's see. Politics and society are on the side. On the side. So that could either be uber left or uber right. Sports. Ooh, we know where economy is. Sports is underneath economy. Awesome sauce. Let's go. Front page news is the first compartment. All right. Front page is first. Etc. And these confidences are almost words of love from her mouth. I don't think that she likes placing the envelopes on the desk at all because she ends up with some thanks that are very disturbing. What? I volunteered for the task much to everyone's displeasure. Nothing new concerning my landlady, but I managed to pay her for the week and she consented to keep me. Don't say anything about my troubles to Mumsy. I don't want to alarm her, but not wanting to lie to her, I have chosen to not write. With warmest regards, your brother, Albert. All right, let's do this. All right. So, front page is you. Sports is under economy. And politics and what? Politics and what? Politics and something. Politics and society is on the side. Okay. Did I do it wrong already? Did I do it wrong? I'm like, just small hint. Da, 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 da. Politics and society are on the side. Sports is underneath economy. Personalities is at the end of the row. Which row? Is it the bottom right? At the same desk, take the note and pencil. News and brief is at a high bin. News and brief is at a high bin. Okay, so top shelf. Uh, weather section is almost always empty. Okay, so I definitely did this wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely did this wrong. Because I read the repair bill and said replace the box, and I'm like, oh, this is the box. But apparently not. Political and personalities have blue confidential envelopes. Okay. Alright, go back to the bins. Based on the repair bill... Place the news and brief label at top right. Okay, so that was right. Okay. Based on the note and pencil, label the bottom right weather. Let me say it's always empty. Okay. Look at the open envelope, news and brief. It is economy. Based on the letter to Fernad, from left to right, politics, society, and economy. Oh, so not starting... Oh. Politics, society... Politics, society, economy. Based on the same letter, place sports below economy. Did that. I'm a little smart. Based on the administrative note, personalities has blue confidential envelopes. Journalist letter states that it is at the end of the row. So is it bottom left? Place personalities label on leftmost of bottom. Let's go. It's the only one left with the blue envelope. Oh, yeah, it's the only one left. 
Based on assistant director's paper in the typewriter, world is always full. This one? And they overflow to bins at the bottom. Place world label left of politics. Interesting. Okay. Based on assistant director's paper in the typewriter, place police law label under world bin. Okay. Based on that, the world bin and culture under society. Uh, that? These envelopes contain dispatches of police and judicial cases. Now, I need to open them discreetly. I must try to unglue the openings. Discreetly, you say. And there was one more note, but I guess maybe at this point they're just like, eh, you've already found it. How does one open a letter discreetly in 1888? I mean, if it's the whole wax thing. Oh my god, I was kidding. I need something. These envelopes contain dispatches of police and judicial cases. Now, I need to open them discreetly. I must try to unglue the openings. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to melt it. I need something. A pot? These envelopes contain dispatch. Yep, yep, got it. These envelopes contain dispatch. Got it! I need something. What do we need for the teapot? Matches? I need something. Okay, something else, something else. I have to light it. Is there wood? Do I need to throw wood into the, our little stove? That's to leave. Hmm. Also, I blame you for sharing your 1010 10 experience. Why would you blame me? You asked. Wait, like 10 out of 10? Or 10 cake? God, what was it I was saying earlier to myself? I'm picky with people who I mate with, but I'm even pickier on who my partner is. And I was like, yeah, that sounds right. And then I was like, I've only had the one boyfriend. And I was like, what about the others? And I was like, they don't count. And I was like, why don't they count? And I was like, I don't think having the label's boyfriend for less than 24 hours counts. And I was like, that's a fair point. And we didn't even do anything. So literally it was just like, okay, we'll date. Never mind. <laughs> no fault to his own. He was a lovely gentleman. It it definitely was me. I was not in the best place mentally. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Sure. Let's go on a date. And then like <laughs> less than 24 hours later, I was like, no. If I'm hating this now, I'm not going to like it in the future. Goodbye. Okay. What am I missing? All right. Take the watering can beside the plant. Oh, is that a watering can? It's a watering can, not a tea kettle. Okay. Take the watering can beside the plant left of the director's door. No, there actually is a watering can. Because then you take the teapot on top of the drawers behind Bullion's desk. Where? I feel like I walked past you. Water. Sure. There, that will provide me with steam. Okay. I have the steam. Can I... These envelopes contain dispatches of police and judicial. Oh my god, just open it. There we go. Give me the steam. Open, and it looks like I'm in luck. This envelope contains precious information. Dave Inquest. Mr. Wayne E. Baxter, the East Middlesex coroner, had an inquiry on Saturday at the London Hospital respecting the death of M. Elizabeth Smith. Quietly living. It was alleged had been murdered. Mm-hmm. Attendant for the commissioner. Deputy keeper of a common lodging house stated that she had known the deceased for about two years. On the eve of bank holiday, she left home at 7 o'clock and returned about 4 or 5 the next morning in a dreadful state. Her face and head were much injured, one of her ears being nearly torn off. She told the witness that she had been 
set upon and robbed of all her money. Witness took her to the hospital, and when passing along Osborne Street, the deceased pointed out the spot where she was assaulted. She said there were three men, but she could not describe them. I need to meet people. <laughs> so do I, Adobo. But at the same time, every time I meet someone new, it's something work-related. And I have a strict rule with work. I'm like, you don't? Hmm? Where you work? I guess some people say you don't eat where you shit. And I'm like, that's... A bit of a visual that we don't need. Okay. Mr. George Hus Huslip? Haslip? House surgeon stated that when the deceased was admitted to the hospital, she had been drinking but was not intoxicating. She was bleeding from the head and ear and other injuries of a revolting nature. Witness found that she was suffering from rupture of the peritoneum, which had been perforated by some blunt instrument used with great force. The deceased told him that at half past one that morning, she was passing near Whitechapel Church when she noticed some men coming towards her. She crossed the road to avoid them, but they followed, assaulted her, took all the money she had, and then committed the outrage. She was unable to say what kind of instrument was used, nor could she describe her assailants, except that she said that one was a youth of 19. Death insured on Wednesday morning, though through partitionists set up by the injuries. What's a peritoneum? Peritoneum? What is that? Peritoneum. I can't spell. Hold on. P. No, not petite. Autocorrect. P e i. Chinerium. Chinerium. This what? The serious, serious membrane lining the cavity of the abdomen and covering the abdominal organs. How do you figure that out? How did you look at the membrane lying the cavity of the abdomen? So, like, did she just have a bruise on her tummy? Is that what they're trying to tell me? Hold on. I'm gonna try to zoom away from it, but... Partial proterium. Tile cavity. Yeah, it's like... The chest areas. Yeah, I guess she got hit in the chest. I'm, like, the only single in this company. Oof. I don't know the status of my, uh, co-workers. It's not something really discussed. I know some of them are married or in relationships. But I don't know about the rest of us. Not that I'm looking. Mm -hmm. Margaret Haynes, living at the time, addresses as the deceased supposed see Mrs. Smith and Company with a man at the corner of Ferret Street. I'm probably reading the streets wrong. The man was dressed in a dark suit and wore a white silk handkerchief around his neck. He was of medium height, but witness did not think she could identify him. Stated that he had no official information on the subject and was only aware of the case through the daily papers. He had questioned the constables on the beat, but none of them appeared to know anything about the matter. The coroner said that from the medical evidence, which must be true, it was clear that the woman had been barbarishly murdered. It was impossible to imagine a more brutal and dastardly assault and he thought the ends of justice would be better met by the jury recording their verdict at once than by adjourning to some future date in the hope of having more evidence brought before them. The jury returned a verdict of willful murder against some person or persons unknown. The police are making every possible inquiry into the case, but up to yesterday had not any clue to the persons who committed the outrage. Okay. And then another testimony by Tabram Case. Resume the inquiry. I'm just going to speed read this. What? Martha Turner or Tabram, a hawker, lately living at Four Star Place, Star Street, commercial, was discovered early in the morning of Tuesday, lying dead on the first floor landing of some model dwellings known as George Yard. Da -da 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 -da. When found, the woman presently a shocking appearance, there being 39 stab wounds on the body, some of them apparently having been inflicted with a bayonet. How'd you figure that one out? All right, Alfred, cab driver 35, just deposed that he got home at half past three on Tuesday morning. As he was passing the first floor landing, he saw a body lying on the ground. He took no notice as he was accustomed to seeing people lying there. He did not then know whether the person was alive or dead. He got up at half past nine and when he went down the staircase, the body was not there. Witness heard no noise while he was in bed. He said that the last witness called his attention to the body of the deceased. He sent for a doctor who pronounced life extinct. 
Oh, I love that. <laughs> when I go, can they explain that to people? It's like, oh, I'm sorry to say this, but Nina's life is extinct. Like, that just sounds amazing. <gasps> Crow! Again, friend. Mm. How are you doing? Especially with your driving. I I love your, your controller, your freaking steering wheel so much. I'm so jealous. Let's see. Said that he was called to the deceased and found her dead. 39 stab wounds. She'd been dead some three hours. Her age was about 36. Body was very well nourished. Witness has since made a post-mortem examination. The left lung was penetrated in five places. The right lung was penetrated in two. Heart was penetrated in one, and that would be sufficient to cause death. Liver was penetrated in five. The spleen was in two, and the stomach was in six. Oh, stabbing. The witness did not think all the wounds were inflicted with the same instrument. The wounds generally might have been inflicted by a knife, but such an instrument could not have inflicted one of the, the wounds, which went through the chest bone. His, oh, so the sternum. His opinion was that one of the wounds was inflicted by some kind of dagger, and that all of them were caused during life. Being a bad employee playing. <gasps> did you rag out? Don't. Shh. We won't tell. We won't tell. Student loan forgiveness. <laughs> Husband of the deceased woman said he last saw her alive about 18 months ago. I'm sorry, what? They had been separated for 13 years owing to her drinking habits. She obtained a warrant against him for some part of the time. Witness allowed her 12s a week. Allowed her 12s a week? But in consequence of her annoyance, he stopped this allowance 10 years ago, since which time he had made it half a crown a week as he found she was living with a man. And we turn a carpenter staying at the working men's home. Say that he had been living with the woman, Tabram, as his wife for about nine years. How did how did people get divorced back in the day? Or was it just like, it's forever or death? Like, did they actually take that serious? Uh, they probably did. Like, divorce was unheard of. Ooh, yeah, actually, hold on. Divorce wasn't a thing until, what's his name? King, what's, what's his name? Separate from the buy and stuff, my school sucked and falsified info to students. So we won the lawsuit and got our loans dropped and refunded. <gasps> Dude, seriously, congrats. Like, that's amazing. And it kind of makes me feel a little shitty because I'm like, man, does that mean if I didn't pay off my loans, I could have gotten them back? But I'm like, nah, oh, yeah, I'd rather pay them off. Don't worry, they've been paid off for a long time. But... Look at you. Love it! They're just like, oh, we messed up. Oh, what was it? Did you guys get that TurboTax lawsuit thing? It was like $28 or something. But I was like, oh, yeah. We. She had money. She spent it in the drink while living with the witness. It was around 11 o'clock. She had no regular companion, and he did not know that she walked the streets. As a rule, he was, he said, a man of sober habits, and when the deceased was sober... They usually got on well together. Wife of a woodcutter. How many people are in this testimony? Formerly a lodger in her house with the man, deceased would rather have a glass of ale than a cup of tea, but she was not a woman who got continually drunk, and she never brought home any companions with her. She left without giving notice and owed two weeks' rent. Pearly Paul. But the suggestion of Inspector Reed was cautioned in the usual manner before being sworn, stayed she'd been for the last two nights living at a lodging house, Dorset Street. Witness was a single woman. She had known the woman tavern for about four or five months. My freaking toe. She knew her by the name of Emma. She last saw her alive on bank holiday night when Witness was with her about three quarters of an hour and they separated at a quarter to twelve with Tabram and two soldiers, one private, one corporal. <gasps> she did not know what the regiment they belonged to, but they had white bands around their caps. After they separated, Tabram went away with the private and Witness accompanied the corporal up Angel Alley. There was no quarreling between any of them. Witness spin to the barracks to identify the soldiers, and the two men she picked out were, to the best of her belief, the men she and Tabram were with. The men at the barracks were paraded before Witness. One of them picked out by Witness turned out to not be a corporal, but he had stripes on his arm. Made a statement of the efforts made by the police to discover the perpetrator of the murder. Several persons had stated that they saw the deceased woman on the previous Sunday with a corporal, but when all the corporals and privates at the tower and Wellington barracks were paraded before them, they failed to identify the man. The military authorities afforded every facility to the police. Pearly Paul picked out two men belonging to the cold stream guards. What's happening? Been testing out a bunch of games so far. Diablo 4, Gunfire, Ka, DVD, all play great. 
Oh, that sounds amazing. Ah. You can be a gamer anywhere now. You'd be like, oh, I'm, yeah, I'm on a car ride. Do -do 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 -do. Not you driving, obviously, but, you know, as a passenger. Uh, guards to the barracks when the man had three good conduct stripes and he was proved beyond doubt to have been with his wife from 8 Monday till 6 the following. The other man was also proved to have been in the barracks at 5 minutes past 10 on bank. The police would be pleased if anyone would give the information and seen anyone with the deceased that night. Don't die, hello. <gasps> Hi, Diggins! Hey, Kian. Said the crime had one of the most brutal that had occurred for some years for a poor defenseless woman to be outraged and stabbed in the manner which this woman was... Almost beyond belief. They could only come to one conclusion, and that was that the deceased was brutally and cruelly murdered. The jury returned a verdict of willful murder against some person or persons unknown. Okay. The information excludes the murder of the first woman, Miss Smith. Jack the Ripper can't be the author of that crime. On the other hand, there are enough similarities to suggest he may be the killer of Martha Tabram. I must go to the pet shop. <gasps> to the pet shop? Are we going to the pet shop? I must go to the pet shop. I, I'm here. Closed until further notice. Abraham isn't there. No luck. Beep beep. Good evening. Oh, good evening, sir. Do you know why Mr. Solomonovich's shop is closed? No, I don't. Perhaps his cousin, the cobbler, knows. But I believe the police came to take his animals. I think that might have something to do with it. When was this? During the day. The kids you were with the other day were there. They told me. They just came by to ask for some cat's meat. They didn't have any money, but I gave them some anyway. Ah. Is something wrong? It's just that there was a little girl with them, the same age as mine. My little girl who went away with her mother. With the angels into the sky. Dr. Watson told me about your loss. Please accept my condolences. Would you like to talk about it? Uh, how did it happen? The illness, sir. My poor little girl was in agony. And her face and body were ravaged by the disease. Her face? Yes. She looked like a ghost. What illness was it? Dr. Gibbons tried to explain when I took my little girl to see him, but I didn't understand. I am sure that he was trying to insinuate it was my fault. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about it anymore. I understand. Farewell. Let's go and see Dr. Gibbons. Yeah, like, what could it be? Oh, I should just be right over here. It's your face. Like a flesh-eating thing? You know what happened, Gibbons? Hello, Doctor. Do you remember me? I'm Sherlock Holmes, Dr. Watson's friend. Oh, yes. Excuse the mess, but I am doing a bit of tidying. I have come to see you about a Mr. Hardiman, a cat food seller by trade who recently lost his daughter and wife. Yes, I know him. A tragic story. Actually, I was hoping you could tell me about the disease that took his daughter, a disease that would have attacked her face. Well, to keep it short, we are speaking of syphilis, Mr. Holmes. You must certainly know that it is transmitted through intimate connections and that the vast prostitute population here contributes to its inevitable progression. It destroys individuals by spreading through the body slowly. The most obvious symptoms can be found in the genitalia and on the face in the form of pustules or lesions. Sometimes this illness can destroy whole families. The father catches it from a prostitute, he transmits it to his wife, who in her turn passes it to the kids which she bears or nurses. These cases are numerous in the vicinity. Certain children, and this is the case of the little girl whom I won't name, suffer from an emaciation of the face which will, apart from predicting an imminent death, bring infamy upon the family. Is he saying what I think he's saying? Emaciation of the face? Yes, what we sometimes call the pox. I will give you a photograph. One cannot be mistaken on the origin of such a face. The eyes seem to be void of lids. The nose is inexistent, as if it was cut off. And the cheeks are chiselled, as if cut with a knife. This loss of facial matter 
this emaciation is, in this area, often the gift from a father to his children. Can I keep this photograph? I should destroy it. But if it can remind you that one must sometimes think twice before giving in to physical attraction... I always seem to find myself alone in such cases. Thank you, Doctor. So I think, yeah, Jack the Ripper is angry at women because syphilis. Okay. Let's go to the cobblers. God. Mm. Let's go to the cobblers. Such a dark chain. I mean, we've been looking at dead bodies. Let's throw some more darkness in there, right? Hello, Mr. Solomonovich. Ah, Mr. Holmes. How are things with you? Where's your cousin? I heard your cousin Abraham had a problem with his shop. What happened? Ah, uh, if I didn't know you well, I would tell you that it's Jewish business that doesn't concern anyone but the Jews. But as you have a little bit to do with it, you have the right to know what is going on. Ah, would I have something to do with it? Someone that's seen Abraham telling you something and making big gestures near the Imperial Club. A vicious rumor quickly spread, and it has caused him great injustice. A slanderous denunciation attracted the authorities' attention to my cousin's shop. Abraham must be in the process of answering their questions. I did, indeed, speak with your cousin the other night. I'm shocked at the consequences of this discussion. As I was saying, it's the story of the Jews. In the face of adversity, we are united, but amongst ourselves, it's like anywhere else. As soon as our people take a dislike to someone, for right or wrong, we can be without pity and quite cruel. This is all very worrying. Your cousin knows one or rather two of the men who were at the Imperial Club on the night of the Mitre Square murder. One of the two, a butcher in Aldgate named Joseph, is probably withholding information of the utmost importance. I must find this man. Perhaps you can help me. But there are dozens of Jewish butchers around Aldgate, half of which must be called Joseph. And you know, Mr. Holmes, we Jews prefer to remain in the background of this murderer business, this Jack the Ripper thing. All of London is pointing their fingers at us, saying, It's a Jew who disemboweled these women. Our community is in great peril, you know. There was the business with Lipsky and Leather Apron. Uh, I will see what I can do, but I don't promise anything. I'd be extremely grateful to you. All right, goodbye. Very well. We may meet again, Mr. Solomonovich. You are most welcome, Mr. Holmes. I've paced up and down Whitechapel enough. I should return to Baker Street in order to reflect on the new facts that I have discovered. All right. Baker Street! Hello, Holmes. Good day, Watson. Listen, Holmes, I know I should have got here sooner to give you a report on my research, but this case has led me to neglect my patients and my wife more than I care to admit. I've been able to sort things out over the last few days, and now I am ready to pursue this investigation. You don't have to justify yourself, Watson. Whilst I do tolerate you as an observer, and despite your occasional help with more menial tasks, may I remind you that you are by no means an indispensable part of this case. Oh, you tolerate me as an observer, do you? Oh, you're too much, Holmes. Well, Mr. Detective, despite my absence, I have been working on this case, putting my relationship on the line in the process. And I happen to have a confidential letter that only passed from one Lord's hand to another. What it contains is extremely serious and concerns Dr. Tumblety and his collection of uteri. Let me see that. Wait, is that the actual plural form of not uteruses? It's uteri? Also, damn, Holmes! He's like, I tolerate you and I don't need you, but, you know, sometimes you're helpful, but meh. <laughs> Ow, asshat. All right, me lord! Be hereby assured of my entire collaboration in the affair to which I must reply. No one will be able to cast... Oh, God. A poribium on our institution or ourselves. What are these words? Our eminent colleagues support our policies and they won't cooperate with the police as long as the higher interests that we serve aren't menaced. 
As you mentioned, we must avoid having to explain to the uncultured masses the exigencies of medical research. A general crisis of confidence will result in the in inevitable amalgamation that the press would hasten to create between this and the hideous murders committed in the East End. To this end, I tactfully evoked the murder that you mentioned in your letter when I met with my colleagues. It turns out to have grounds, and these are the specifics that I was able to obtain. 18 months hence, an American doctor in London did in fact contact certain hospitals. His approach was aimed at getting stocks of feminine genitalia, particularly uteri. He was motivated initially by the finalization of his research and of its publication. The doctor in question wanted to include a uterus specimen freshly conserved in formella with each of the research dissertations sent to each of the colleagues involved. I'm sorry, he wanted to send everyone a uterus? A large quantity was thus necessary. Oh no. And this doctor proposed to buy each of the uteri for 20 pounds each. The hospital directors did not pay heed to these demands. Of that, I have been assured. Between you and I, my lord, who knows what strange consequences would have followed these demands of the American doctor. The rumor of these unusual commissions made the tour of hospitals in question at the time and has spread to others since. Simple day laborers employed in our organizations considered that the gain of 20 pounds could justify a theft, perhaps worse. Oh no. Oh no. The identity of the doctor is unknown to me, but based on the recall of one of my colleagues, this man had the most impressive references, but after a bit of research that I did, I didn't find the existence of any publication with an eventual correlation on this or the other side of the Atlantic. The man left London shortly after his pitch, it would seem. I cannot help but think that he has perhaps returned to London and has found someone who might furnish him with what he is looking for. So what I'm understanding is that he tried to buy some. And it didn't work. And now the doctors are worried that some day laborers overheard this and they're like, 20 pounds for a uterus. And they're like, well, guess I gotta go get one. There's only one way to get one. <laughs> a whole lot of uterus. That is new to us. <laughs> That's a strange party gift. I mean, he wanted to present it to people. For his dissertation papers and his research, which I'm like, yeah, that's 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 a weird gift to be like, oh, you've read my paper and you've enjoyed it here. I present you uterus, and it's like, I I'm good, man. I'm a doctor too. I'm I'm good. Excellent. This American could turn out to be of great use to use. That's right, and that's not all. I did some research and finally found an illness that affects the genitalia and can, in certain cases, cause facial symptoms resembling the mutilations seen on the last victim. It is called, would you believe? Syphilis and the emaciation that can be seen in affected children. I have known that for days, Watson. Really? Listen, now you're already here, Watson, we may as well continue the investigation. Do you remember the map on which we established the area in which our killer lives? I think we should continue our study. Poor Watson. Right, like, he's trying. He's a doctor, he's trying, and... Almost just kind of being a dick about it. He's like, I've known for days. And it's like, you know what, why didn't you solve this then? Hmm? Hmm? You've known for days? What have you been doing? Sitting here smoking your pipe. Does he want me to head back to... Hello, Watson. Claim your complimentary uterus at the front desk. Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> no! No! <laughs> Ooh, interesting thought crossed my mind. If, because I get, I, is it tested tomorrow? No, I think I get tested next week. Next week. I'm almost curious if they're like, yeah, you do have cancer. Would they cut it out? And if they cut it out, could I eat it? Or would they just put the cancer back in me? I feel like it would be like chewy. Not like gum, but like, I guess like a tendon or something? I don't know. What it? Hmm. I feel like, yeah, it would just take a while to chew. 
It's my own part. What? I feel like I could eat it. I probably would have to cook it. I can't be like, hey, chef, can you cook this up for me? They'd be like, the fuck is this? And it's like, oh, that's a part of me. But it's... We cut it out because it's bad. But I still want to eat it because <laughs> it's a part of me. Oh my god. I don't think I don't think they'd let me keep it. They'd probably be like, no, it's full of cancer. You can't eat this. And I'd be like, damn. Where am I going? Baker Street. I'm already at Baker Street. What are you talking about? Go back to Baker Street. Watson gives a letter from the thing. Uh-huh. What? Where's Martha's picture? Martha's picture isn't here! Watson, the guide is lying to me. Nothing of interest here. Where am I going? Oh, what? We must place the murder of Martha Tabram in George Yard on the map. Okay, do you mean this map? Well, I discovered the case of another murder before that of Bucks Row. It happened in George Yard. We shall put it on the map in order to see if it corresponds to our area of research. We must place the murder of Martha Tabram in George Yard on the map. I... I don't know. I mean... According to stories I've read on cannibals, they do say people from different regions taste different, but that's mainly because of diet. Which kind of tracks, you know, it's like, you can have a ca car, a cow that's like wild and free, you know, free range cow. And you're like, mm, delicious. Then you have a cow that's in a slaughterhouse and he just has the gate and he just eats all day. And he's like, moo, I'm going to die. Meow. So, you know, tastes good, but does definitely doesn't taste as good as the free range cow. That's like, huzzah. So I would say yes to your question, Diggins. Probably. I don't know what one would taste like versus the other one, but yeah. All right, Martha, where am I putting you? That is where Martha Tabram's murder took place. There's no point going there. I already have all the information we need on that matter. You see, this murder took place in the area in which our killer lives, his safe zone. Nonetheless, there are two major differences between the murder of this Martha Tabram and that of Polly Nichols. Firstly, the blows inflicted are not the same. And the second difference? It follows on from a doctor's opinion. He claims two weapons might have been used, and if there is one group of people we absolutely must not trust in this business, it's doctors. Don't you agree, Watson? Watch it, Holmes. Tabram's murder took place in an area where the murderer, whose cowardice is clear, was able to make a quick getaway, that is to say, near his home. For his second murder, he would have wanted to go further afield, so the police would not link these two cases. And as for the other murders, seeing the ineffectiveness of his last one, he headed in different directions to kill his victims while still staying in the vicinity and without going any further than necessary, and all the while planning his escape. My dear Watson, we now know what this man looks like, in what area he lives, and that he suffered directly or indirectly from syphilis. Let's not forget the anatomical knowledge he must almost certainly possess. Given his lower class background, a butcher seems very likely. However, it may be the case that the man was a butcher once, but is no longer. He might also have been a medical assistant. Who knows? That's why we need the testimonies of the other Joseph and Dr. Tumblety in order to be certain. What shall we do, Holmes? As the police's cooperation is futile and can be ruled out, we have nothing to do but wait. Watson, wait, and hope we see one of these two men before the killer strikes again. Just, just wait. <sighs> At last, a long day's work done. How are you doing, Holmes? Fine, Watson, just fine. I suppose you still haven't heard any news from Whitechapel? No, Watson. It's been almost a month now. Who knows, our killer may have brought justice upon himself, overcome by remorse and ignominy for his actions. Not a chance, Watson. You haven't done anything about the story of a kidney that was sent in the post and reported by the papers. Why not? The killer left a message on one occasion with the intention of harming. The letter accompanying this package served no purpose other than to give value to its recipient and arouse disgust against its sender. The killer has never done anything for nothing. In order to authenticate the Galston Street message, he left an indisputable piece of evidence. Can we really say as much about this kidney? I don't know. All I know is that there are letters piling up on your desk. Isn't it time to move on to another case? 
Absolutely not, Watson. I think that the other Joseph is reluctant to meet me. The man he saw must certainly have put the fear of God in him, a man well known for his violence and his hatred towards Jews. There can't be any shortage of those in Whitechapel. I have hope yet. As for Dr. Tumblety... We found him, Mr. Holmes. We found him. Who's that? Dr. Bumblebee. He's been locked up by the Bobbies, but they've let him loose. Oi! He was looking round like a rat who's scared of his own shadow. He's gonna do a run at years. Watson, this is our chance. The game is afoot. Let's hope that Tumblety will go to collect his trunk. As for you, my little friends, thank you for lifting this burden that has been on my shoulders for almost a month. Bumblebee. Dr. Bumblebee. Alright. Where am I going? Boarding house, right? Take me back! He is here. The doctor is here, up in his room. Peeking through my door, I saw him go up the stairs, and I think that he has a pistol. Regarding the trunk, did you do what I told you to? Yes, I jammed the lock and filled the trunk with stones. Should we call the police? Absolutely not. Go home, lock your doors, and if you hear a gunshot, shout as loudly as you can. Watson, we must disarm this man at all costs before attempting to confront him. Come, have your pistol at the ready and stay alert. Wait, what? Hold on. Wasn't expecting the Decepticons to be an ally in this case. Give Bumblebee what for? Isn't Bumblebee an Autobot? Wait, did Bumblebee change sides? <gasps> right, let's talk to this man. Don't move a muscle or I shoot. Oh my oh. god. But what is going on? Bravo, Watson. I take back everything I ever said about your less than full involvement in our investigations. Listen, Mr. Policeman. I already told everything to your colleagues at the station, so... Don't you believe it, sir. We're not with the police. We are here to talk about human organs, an area in which you seem to have a great deal of interest. What? But who are you? We are the ones holding the pistol. Listen, Tumblety, tell us everything you know and you will be spared from the noose or a bullet. Have you tried to get hold of any female genitalia from someone during these past months? <laughs> so that's it. You English. Listen, as it happens, I do have a collection of female genital organs which I hold dear and never miss the chance to show my friends whatever the occasion. If you knew what I feel when my eyes meet the young men's as they contemplate with astonishment and disgust this soft and flabby skin that they worship and place at the center of all their passions. Women repulse me, gentlemen. They are one of nature's greatest mistakes. Lying, haughty, and most of all, nauseating. No, sirs. Men. Mankind. We are not made to soil ourselves with such animals, and it is my task to educate my peers, like the ancient Greeks used to do, and put them on the path to masculine relationships, the only kind worthy of our intelligence. My God, this man has lost his marbles, Holmes. You haven't answered my question. Did you attempt to obtain any female organs? Indeed, but a long time ago. I was living in Liverpool at the time. A few of my specimens were starting to lose their freshness. But despite the sum proposed, the heads of the university hospitals refused to accede to my demands. The fear of what others would say, certainly. I know nothing more similar to an arrogant fowl than an English doctor. Yakety yak, always showing off in the courtyard with their haughty airs. And as soon as... Shut it, Tumblety. So, was it you who killed all of these women? Yes or no? I regret to say that it was not. If I had really wanted a few more uteri, I would have had them brought in from the United States, where it would cost me much less than here. Or I would have shown a few gold coins in the hallways of a morgue or a hospital in London, and they would have kissed my feet to sell them to me, and not taken the least risk. But kidneys are all the latest, aren't they? I think that I could find one tomorrow for less than a pound. In short, Gentlemen, I do not know your killer, and I don't know why he's doing that. 
but if you come across him one day, please send him my friendship and my deepest respect. You've gone too far this time. Come, Watson, let's not get carried away now. Shoot him! Thank you for your assistance, Doctor. If I may offer some advice, you should leave England as soon as possible. Each day that you remain in this country is a risk that an intelligent man would not take. My pistol? Without that, it will be even more risky. Can we believe this man, Holmes? He can't be the murderer, and his story regarding the organs fits. But we can't afford to take the slightest risk. I will ask the Baker Street Irregulars to follow him. Listen, lads, when Tumblety leaves here, follow him discreetly, and come and tell me as early as possible tomorrow where he is currently residing. Understood? Understood, Captain. You are already ready, Holmes. What is going on? I have been waiting for you for at least an hour, Watson. It would appear that a new drama has unfolded. The youngsters came to give me this address, but I have some doubt as to the actual location we are going to. Let's try anyway. At worst, we may come across the Baker Street Irregulars to put us in the right direction. Where am I going? What's happening? I have a joke that's not gonna land now because this cutscene is so long! It's fine. We it's are lost, Holmes. It's about a parrot. No, we're not, Watson. We are heading for the very street I'd hoped for, but as I wasn't sure it was this one, I've made a few big detours in order to find the right one. I'll know it when I see the name. Why, of course, Holmes. Why didn't I think of that? The great Sherlock Holmes can't... Anyway. <laughs> the pro the proto-misogynistic, yep. In our day, he'd be writing a blog and getting banned from Twitter, right? And then the joke I was gonna come up with, well, not come up with, but follow up with, is like, did you guys see... What was it? The gender for trans-affirming misogynistic parrot and it's like this parrot has a sign that says I bite women only handle me if you're a man and <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the woman got bit I just love that happy pride from the trans affirming misogynistic parrot I just, it's great it's like you're misogynistic but thank you for accepting me it's beautiful Anyway, what's up? Oh, is that is that beep beep? No, it's not beep beep. How are you, my friend? Are you not feeling well? No. My friend is a doctor. He can take care of you. Don't go there. She, she, he gave me a an e. Now, now, Watson, take care of him. Go oh, emotions. Handle the crying. I'm guessing there's a dead body back here with him crying like that. It's a hole. Nothing of interest here. I don't see a body. This door? Open the door at the right, just before the courtyard. Oh, this one? Oh! Are those all the insides that are now outside? My god! What happened? Can't talk. Wait for the coppers. Are they coming? My eyes are crying. Uh, no. Go find them too, mister. I'll stay here and keep an eye out. Go! No, I must await my friend. Ah, here he is. Watson, are you there? How are you? Uh, fine, Holmes. And you? What happened? Hello, sir. Where are we, Watson? In Whitechapel, Holmes. This must be Dorset Street. You don't seem very well. Do you need something? Indeed, Watson. Some clay, a great big piece of clay. I would ask for some wine, too, but as you know, I taste nothing but melodrama. <laughs> what is over there? A trip from which you will never return, Watson. Trust me, don't go there. A trip? Behind this door? In this room? 
It's not strictly a door, it's more of a portal, a threshold. And what lies behind it is not the mortal realm, Watson. It is a place beyond time and space, the gift of a frantic artist who made use of his talent in order to grant us access to his world, Watson. Beyond that threshold is an abyss. Hell. The police won't take long to arrive, and the last thing I want is to waste precious time on them. Could you lead me out of this area and take me home? Oh, wow, he's actually shook. He's actually shook up from it. Bro, what did you... I, like, I saw legs and I saw the pile of organs, so, like... I guess she's just... just... Alright. Back home we go. Hey, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, she would... Oh! oh! The chesticles! You should come and eat, Holmes. Mrs. Hudson has worked wonders. The joint has been cooked medium rare. If only you would tell me what was in the courtyard. The answer, Watson. The answer, Holmes? Yes, the answer to a question that you asked me a few weeks ago. But how the devil can the answer to a question I asked you be found in that courtyard? And what question are you referring to, Holmes? How our killer set about reaching the height of horror by taking another victim, Watson. <laughs> Did I not tell you that I wanted to avoid melodrama? Do you mean to say that? Yes, that's what was in that room. You help towards the color. All that's missing is the odor, but I shall let that pass. The mutilations almost all resulted in large removals of flesh. My photographic memory noted them all in great detail, the shape, size, and location. And thanks to the softness of this clay and your medical knowledge, I believe we can attempt to determine what is missing from this lady. Don't you think we should wait for the medical examiner's opinion? Surely not, Watson. This massacre has gone on long enough. I can assure you that I will do everything in my power to get our hands on Jack the Ripper before this night is out. Okay. So, Watson, how did you talk and drink and then just decide to throw up wine? Watson, we shall reconstruct the body of this poor woman and inspect it in detail as well. Your help as a medical man will be invaluable. Holmes, I... I feel a bit unwell. Well, I understand. I will manage on my own. Her throat was slit just like the others. The wound is particularly deep. A lot of... lot of... lot of face assault. Alright. Well, we got the defensive wound, so she tried to fight him off. And I... Did he, like, s Hmm. Well, looks like he started here, went, natural opening, and then was like... Did he start here and go this way, or did he start here and go this way? I feel like it'd be easier to go this way, because with this being open, and then you could try to follow that, it's like, there's not tension to drag the knife. Then again, if it's a sharp enough knife, it'd be fine. Why are there scratches under the already removed part of the flesh? Why would you cut after? Unless that was the first one he did, and that's why it's, like, not a good job. All right. I need, uh, I need parts. <laughs> Quit analyzing, you know, just shove parts in there. All right, replaced organs. I'm trying to grab them. Oh, I gotta grab tweezers. Okay. Might as well. There were incisions in the rib cage, as if to inspect the lungs. Put that back first. The liver was neatly removed. How do I... Take your liver! <laughs> Nina not knowing where her liver goes. Is it a kidney? Yeah, it's a kidney. Heart, spleen, uterus. Watch is that? Oh, come here, spleen. Come here. Okay. Where's the heart? Wait, is this the uterus? Why is it like a bird? An organ is missing, apparently. I must specify which organ this is on my list. It's the heart. There we are, Watson. We have examined everything. The heart is the only thing missing. Two uteri, a kidney, and now a heart. 
He had all the time he wanted in which to disfigure her, cut her up like a piece of meat, and yet took nothing but the heart. What do you think of that, Watson? Watson? Nope, he's still sick. Okay. I probably would throw up too, man. Don't worry. What? How often do you see a disemboweled person? Not often! I Second. dread to think how you'd react if you saw a corpse. I'm returning to Whitechapel, Watson, to Isaacs. If the heart tells you to come with me, if the heart tells you a little wordplay there. <laughs> Let's go to the cobblers. <sighs> He's making dark jokes! I was gonna say, Holmes can easily find the... Never mind. Find the what? I don't know if you've noticed, but Holmes is giving off very ace vibes. He's like, I don't engage in that. He's like, I don't look for physical connections. We figured this out. Nina loves playing in the park. Wee! I. Why is anyone surprised? Why is anyone surprised? Literally, growing up as a small tater tot, I was like, I want to be a mortician. Or I make video games. And I looked at the prices of college and I was like, hmm, medical school? Video game school. Video game school. And now I don't even use the degree, but I use it for this. So technically, it's a win. Well, if he did. I don't know. I can see him making the conclusion that, you know, essentially short frying your brain can, like, not lead it to being at its full capacity because, you know, kind of need that. But then again, I can also see them being like, you get a wider range of clarity with such a release of energy. Mm. Could have been a mortician! Let's go to the cobblers. What's funny enough, I think I do have one or two more, like, morgue games. I think the one is even called A Mortician's Tale, and I'm just like, oh! Let me in! Beep, beep! Oh, what's up, man? Evening, Mr. Holmes. So, something was heavily implied, and I think I understood what was implied, so I'm not a fan of you anymore, if what was implied is correct to my understanding. Good evening, Hardiman. Has Abraham Solomonovich still not reopened his shop? No, not that I know of. Have you heard anything about the latest murder? Certainly there is talk of nothing else. Poor girl. I hope they catch the bastard who did it. Who do you think that could be? A madman, that's for sure. Everyone in the area is pinning it on a Jew. But I don't believe that for a second. Why? Because Jews don't like blood, you see. They're not allowed to eat it. And they have to drain the meat before cooking it. It's true that they eat animals, but they are fanatical about all kinds of silly things. I don't know much about their rituals and all, but I know that a Jewish butcher can't just do whatever he pleases with his knife. He has strict kosher rules to follow. You seem to be very well informed. Well, I buy my meat from them too. My clients don't care whether the meat comes from Jews or not. Cats eat it regardless. And let me tell you, I'd go as far as to say that I may even have more faith in a Jew. Because even if they don't eat all the offals, a Jew inspects them to see if the animal was in good health. Lungs, for the most part. And as they make up most my cat's meat, you can see the connection, right? Mm -hmm. Jews are allowed to eat offals? Ah, uh, yes. They eat calves' kidneys, I think. How big is that? A calf's kidney? Ah, well, that depends if it's fresh or if it's been marinated in brine or cooked. When fresh, are they as big as a human kidney? They would be, yes. You know, Mr. Hardyman, it's lucky for both of us that the murder that took place in your mother's courtyard was only the Whitechapel killer's third. Had it been the first, I wouldn't be thanking you, as I'm doing now, for all of this important information. Goodbye and take care. If you say so. 
Right, farewell, Mr. Holmes. That's so Let's fancy. It's really cool. Oh my god, that's gonna be a beautiful kitchen. I can already tell. I am the jealous. I am the jealous of this place, this fancy building. All right, let's go talk to the cobbler. Hi, man. Hey, man, how's it going? Good evening, Mr. Solomnovich. Evening, Mr. Holmes. If you've come about the business of my cousin, I hate to say... Eat awful? Before you respond to my request, I must ask you to answer this question of the utmost importance. What offals are Jews allowed to eat? Well, the same as you. Kidney, heart, liver? Yes. How are they prepared? Kidneys are boiled, heart is often finely sliced and cooked on a skewer, and liver is always grilled. These offals, do they come from cattle? Yes, beef or veal. And eating non-kosher food would be a grave affair for a Jew, isn't that right? Yes, it would be very serious. But what are you getting at? Is he preparing meals for Jews and he's going to have them eat women organs? If I were to tell you what I'm thinking, Mr. Solomonovich, you would pull out your own eardrums to not hear the end of my sentence. It goes against the beliefs of hundreds of members of your community, and for some, perhaps even worse. I will ask you one last time before involving the authorities, who I assure you will be far less discreet than myself. Do you know who the second Joseph is, the Aldgate Butcher, who your cousin knows from the Imperial Club? His name is Joseph Hyam Levy. But I don't know where he lives. I know nothing about him other than he's a member of the Imperial Club on Duke Street. That street is after Church Passage, coming from Mitre Square. Am I right? That's it. Thank you. You have been an enormous help to both of us. Now, listen carefully. I need you to find four or five strong men among the members of your family who you trust wholeheartedly and to wait here with them until my arrival or you receive a message from me. Is that clear? But if you will tell me... Later, Mr. Solomonovich. Later. Why, Let's why does, go to the Imperial Club. Why does he need strong men? What? What? Ah, there's the Imperial Club. Let's see if I can find Joseph Hyam Levy. Twelve foot ceiling in these kitchens? Oof. That means there's so much wall space for art. Mm. Hello, sir. Hello. Can I help you, sir? Indeed, I have an urgent message for Mr. Joseph Levy, the Aldgate Butcher. Oh, I regret, sir, but Mr. Levy is not at the club at present. You can wait for him if you wish. I thank you. Do you know where I can find him? His home address, perhaps? It is a very urgent matter. I am sorry, sir, but we do not give out information regarding the club members to people outside the group. I understand. I must find a way to enter the Imperial Club without having to go through the entrance hall. I was, I was trying to listen to the sound. God, what was it? I saw a, a tweet, and it was a... <laughs> it was a person who had art hung up on their wall, and they had written this in all caps, where they're like, when maintenance makes an emergency visit to your apartment to fix the AC, but you're a shameless furry. And they just had, like, sticky notes all over this art, and, it, like, you know, you can kind of, like, ascertain what's happening in the art, but you're just like... <laughs> It's just like, quickly, sticky notes to cover the, the stuff and be like, oh, it's just somebody sitting really awkwardly on something. Or it's like, oh, it's just somebody at a party. There's nothing happening here. And I was just like, tee -hee. And I sent it to a, one of my uh, furry friends. I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is what happens. See, now some people are like, look at this art. And it was good art. But I'm just like, I don't know if I would hang that on my wall. But then I was like, mm, it's my house and I don't expect any visitors to come by. It's my house, I can do what I want. I don't think it's a complicated calculation. If the police find out the murder is Jewish, the press will find out too. Then the pros persecution will go up by 100 times. There'd be murders. Holmes is gonna make sure no one knows the identity of the murder. I don't know if that's what we're going for. Judging by the sound of voices and applause, there's a meeting going on at this very moment. I'll have to be very cautious. Pardon me, sir, but the club is only open to members. I must find a way to enter the Imperial Club without having to go through the entrance hall. 
a note encouraging members of the Jewish community to remain prudent and vigilant after rumors about the Whitechapel murders. All right. Weighs on our community heavily. Consequently, an exemplary conduct must be shown now more than ever, as well as increased vigilance. Such as synagogues, shops, and clubs are likely to become targets. All incidents must be stifled as much as possible. And go for a little. I have a delivery to help with. <gasps> okay, Diggins. We be here. This may come in handy. What am I gonna do with a broken coat hanger? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. There's a cellar window behind this barrel, which is preventing me from passing. So move the barrel? There's a cellar window behind this barrel, which is preventing me from passing. So move the what? There's a cellar window behind this barrel. Okay, I got it. There's a cellar window behind this barrel. Do I... There we are. My pivot is in place. Now, let's find something to tip over this barrel. Your hands? There's a cellar window behind this barrel. I will admit, I am looking at the guide. <laughs> just... Just move it. Alright. Alright, there's a piece of wood. else over here Holmes you're making this more complicated than you need it to be Cole it's a service door and firmly locked there must be a stock room in the cellar beneath this room if I can just get into the coal cellar I shall be in the place I didn't mean to hit that my bad I was trying to go here so I could be like he should run at it I'm sure I'll move if he barrels into it <laughs> trying to find that button Ignore the Tangier thing. I should be able to make it tip over. Bruh, that sounded like an empty barrel. Holmes. Closed. The cellar window is locked from the inside by a simple iron hook. Oh, is this where it comes in? Let's go. Good. Let's try to find the exit that leads to the club. Assuming up the stairs. Also, just because we're gonna save. Look at that. It's almost an hour and a half and we're still here, so I'm glad I paused yesterday. This may come in handy. Got a key. What kind of key. Administration key. Okay. Closed. I have a key? Empty tin cans. Closed. <gasps> oh, I'm in. The kitchen. It's closed, and besides, I won't find what I'm looking for in there. Hey, oh, let's go. Let's hope that it really is the key to this door. Administration. Perfect. This must be where the information on club members is kept. Ooh. This must be the club safe. What I'm looking for is probably inside. I need something. Yeah, all I have right now is matches. A page from an old Yiddish English dictionary. Court's proceedings. Curious. Tuesday, 419 Morris, Moss, and Jacob. Ooh, three people. Stealing 14 pounds of meat at Heyman, Sampson, the master of Phillips and Wolf. Mr. Keir prosecuted, Mr. Murray appeared for Phillips, Mr. Black for Wolf, and Mr. George Hagen for Levi. Samuel Bacon. <laughs> I received information from my inspector, and on the 10th, I was watching the prosecutor, prosecutor shop. Phillips came up to the door and knocked, got answer, and went away. About two minutes afterwards, Levi came out at his shop door, which is next door. A post divides them. He knocked at Mr. Sampson's door and went back in at his own door. Came out again in a minute or two, unscrewed the bolt of his shutter bar, and then looked around and knocked at Mr. Sampson's door again. There being no answer, 
He went down the street 10 or 12 yards to the corner of Stony Lane. Phillips joined him. They conversed and went back to Mr. Sampson's door. Phillips knocked and Levi went in at his own door. The door was opened. Phillips went in and turned up the gas. Levi came out of his shop and went into Mr. Sampson's shop where he had a conversation with Phillips. He came in about a minute and went into his own shop where I saw Wolf who brought a piece of meat from the back of the shop to the door and he hung it on the hook just inside the door and then came out of the footway, looked around, took the meat off the hook and took it quickly in at Levi's door and gave it to, oh sorry, Lewis and gave it to Lewis. He then returned to Samson's shop I ran into Levi's shop, caught hold of him with the meat in his hand, and asked what he was going to do with it. He said, we are only having a lark. I am going to weigh it. I said I did not believe it. I should take him to Mr. Sampson, which I did, and then took him to the station, where he repeated that it was only a lark. I found 32L10S9D in his pocket. The meat was 14 pounds of beef. I had been watching since 5.15. It was perfectly light outside at 6.15, but not inside Levi's shop. There being no gas, cross-examined by Mr. Black, I was in some buildings opposite, lying among some bricks and rubbish, but not within hearing distance. I could not see who opened the door. As the shutters were not down, but Phillips turned the gas up afterwards, we were both in plain clothes. Wolf sleeps on the premises. What? I was with bacon. I have heard his evidence and co corroborated it. I went into Samson's shop and saw Phillips and Wolf, and I told them I was a police officer and should take them in custody for stealing a piece of beef. Phillips said, I know nothing about it. I came in from the back of the shop. Wolf said, I know nothing about it. I took them at the station. I took them to the station. Cross-examined by Mr. Black, Wolf did not say, I know nothing about it. I correct myself. He made no reply. Cross-examined by Mr. George Han, I did not go into Levi's shop, nor did I see in... As the shutters were up, there may have been a quantity of meat in the background. Hey, Min Sampson. I'm a butcher of 35 Middlesex Street. Phillips and Wolf were my servants. Philip about three months and Wolf about two or two and a half years. I had spoken to the police and on the 10th March, about five o'clock, I went to market. I was sent for and came back and found the three prisoners in custody. The policeman asked Levi what he intended to do with it. He said the boy brought it in for a lark and then said, Mr. Sampson, you are not going to do anything with me. The meat was worth 7s. cross examined by Mr. Moore, Phillips slept at the shop on Wednesdays and Thursdays. This was Wednesday morning. He would sleep away from the shop on Tuesday nights. cross examined by Mr. Black, I discharged Wolf once and took him back again. I had a place in Goldstone Street for 19 years. I know been well, a butcher. I took Wolf from his employment. I never asked for a character. He was only a little boy. I have never found fault with him before. Cross-examined by Mr. George Hand, Levi was there before I came. He was not taking customers from me. I have no animosity against him. I have met him out of business hours. This was not the best meat at 60 a pound. I have some at 11 D. Levi has never chafed me and said that his meat was better than mine. He buys from the same killer as I do. I sell more expensive meat than he does, but there has been no joking about it, nor did we ever bet about it. Jewish authorities will not give a man a license unless he has an excellent character. I have accused my wife of robbing me. I did not find out that she had a separate banking account. I did not accuse her before Phillips came into my service. I may have said at the police court that I accused her 12 months ago. I have not said that if Levi would leave this shop, I would not carry on the prosecution against him. I would not let him off, off, let him off for 10,000 pounds. Re-examined at 6.15 a.m., my five employees were on the premises. Levi received a good character. Phillips not guilty. Wolf guilty, recommended to mercy by the jury. Four months hard labor. Levi guilty of receiving 12 months hard labor. Oh! Why'd Levi get so long? Okay, because I can see him. If it's Levi, he being a little mad. This? Some square metal tokens. Curious. There is a document. Sir, I wanted to let you know that if your club needed kosher meat when you have any special functions, I'd be available to finish furnish it for you. Guaranteed by a compliment abattoir? It'll be delivered directly to your society at a time that is convenient. 
Reasonable prices. Do not hesitate to call upon my services, Jacob Levy. Refused on the advice of Joseph Heyman Levy. There must have been litigation between Joseph Hyam Levy and Jacob Levy. Why is Levi so long? Well, Nina. I need something. This must be the club's safe. What I'm looking for is probably inside. The lock on this chest is very sophisticated. Let's see. Oh. Okay. Okay, there's no rotating. Got a P. Got a P over here. Uh, P. Mm, that don't match. But it's the only one with a T on the side. Fudge. Well, being Scottish, it was probably destroyed. That was meant as a joke, but it wouldn't be surprised if it turned out to be true. Oh. So there's Middlesex, Wessex, Essex, and Sussex. Where's the North Sex or whatever? Well, there's all... Isn't there also, like, towns called, like, cock? Because they were like, yeah, chickens! Cock! But nowadays, we're just like, tee -hee. Maybe they just like the X sound. They're like, ooh, X. Alright. Maybe it spells a word. Because we do have the dictionary. That's not, that's not magic. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna reset. I completely believed you. <laughs> Alright, we have the dictionary. The lock on this chest is very sophisticated. Let's see. Okay, the dictionary doesn't do anything. All right. Mm -hmm. Use the metal tiles, drawers on the front of the safe, reset button is top right. Arrange the tiles to have matching letters on all adjoining sides. Pull the knob with the right. Yeah, that's kind of what I think. I guess we just process of elimination. Well, we tried this first, so let's try this first. It's going to be a no, because none of you have this on the side. So you're probably going to be a corner. I'll put you in there. Pie right top. Ooh, double pie? There's no such thing as double pie. What about a pie and an N? <gasps> no. Okay, well you don't go here. Hold on. Yeah, you're the only one that has S's. Because if I do this, it's like, all right, we need a D to match, but nothing matches. So it's like, you have to be over here. One of these three. You have to be his buddy somewhere. Put you in the middle. <gasps> Triple ends. If I do you here. Do a pie there. Oop. A pie and an N? A pie and an N? Ooh, double N. Pie. P. <gasps> Elementary. There's also effing Austria. That's perfect. These documents contain some words in Yiddish, which reads from right to left. Okay. We know from... Blah, the power of gematria that enables us to count everything in the world, seen and unseen. Thus, we know that Lester counts as 439, and he is blessed because 439 is also, which means the man of God. I did the counting of names for our club members, which is as follows. Mr. Bath is 403. Bet, 2. Aleph, 1. And Tha, 400. Oh, and then 2 plus 1 is 3 plus 400. Mr. Hammer is 356, A is 5, Aleph is 1, Mem is 40, Mem is 40, Ayin is 70, Esh is 200. Oh, E, A I E. Sincerely yours, please tell Mr. Mural that provided his name is spelled as this, he is 346. <sighs> okay.
And I'm guessing I gotta figure out which letter corresponds. Which number? This bath is B-A-T-H, which gives me 400. So him being 346 makes me think that H and A are possibly in there. Hee <laughs> hee, Mr. Hammer. Just they called me that. That could be construed in so many good and bad ways. All right. I would like to use the dictionary. How do I pull up the dictionary? Use the Yiddish Hebrew dictionary on the ledgers inside the safe. I'm trying. I need to have like this. These documents contain some inventory. I want to use the dictionary. <sighs> All right. Well, since I can't figure out how to work the dictionary. Or just... Oh, is that right? I was guessing. Or are you just saying, like... Is it Abraham? Oh, my spelling. Read the information on the door of the safe. Learn that each name has a count or number. The ledgers are filed by letters as seen on the spine. The aim of the puzzle is to place the letters on the spine of the ledgers above the corresponding Hebrew numbers. Use the alphabets translated at left as clues. The letters in a word are arranged spelled right to left. A is that? Da, 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 da. So everything I just read. Take the letter from below the ledgers and place it on the squares on the spine. If correct, the arrow turns green. I don't think it'd be C. That seems too easy. That's why I was like, Abraham. See a list, uh, let's see. Of L's, click on Joseph Levi. The file on Joseph Levi states that he lives at, take the candlestick on top of the safe. I don't know, do I not know how to spell Abraham? Well, I guess I could just do this, process of elimination. A few moments later. <laughs> ah! I wonder if this actually corresponds with like actual Hebrew, you know? Like I know it's kind of like, oh, it's a code, but like this is the actual Hebrew letter for F and A and B and all that. I feel like it's Abraham. know if it's actually going to spell a word. It might just be like, that's just but lettering. Excellent. Now on to the next step. For an all gate member home address, self-employed butcher, dues. Oh, he owes money. Here we are. I have the address of this Joseph Haim Levy. 36 Middlesex Street. Now, let's try to get out of here without being seen. This may come in handy. Apparently, I'm supposed to take that with me. Is there anything else? I'm supposed to take with me? Even though it's clearly stealing.
Right, I just go back the way I came. Blast! My exit has been sealed off. The barrel was replaced. I'll have to find another way. What am I... What am I assembling here? I can't get out through the window. It's blocked and appears to be reinforced. I'll have to find another way out. Closed. I need something. I need something. I need something. I need something. I'm I need something. I'm going through it. I need something. What? Okay. Yeah. Go back up. Look up the ceiling. On the ceiling. Oh. I need something. I need something. I need something. Yep. Huh? What are you doing? What are you doing? I need something. I need something. Now let's quickly hide in administration. Oh, I'm making a noise. Little more pep in the step, Holmes. Like you, get out of here. Let's visit Joseph Levy at thirty-six Middlesex Street. That's supposed to be in this area, right? <gasps> I here just... I am in Middlesex Street. Let's find number thirty-six. Right there. I feel like I should talk to you. Do you have anything? Would you look at that, Mister? A unique choice for unique customers, each specially priced. I'm, I'm good. Thank you. Have a time. She's day drinking. Hello, sir. What do you want? Hello, ma'am. I would like to speak with Mr. Levy. Do you know if he's in? I am Mrs. Levy, his wife. He's not arrived yet. Do you know when he'll be in? Oh, no idea. You know, he works at the butchers and helps at the slaughterhouse. It often happens that he doesn't come in until early morning and then leaves right away. Well, listen, as soon as your husband Joseph returns, tell him that... My husband isn't called Joseph. You aren't the wife of Joseph Hyam Levy? No, of course not. I'm the wife of Jacob Levy. Mr. Hyam Levy used to live here with his parents, but he moved. I... Mommy, mommy, who is the man that you are talking to? But this poor child has syphilis. He carries the mark on his face. Leave us, children. Go back inside with your brothers and sisters. Yes, mother. As I was saying, Mr. Hyam Levy doesn't live here. He works in the butchers near Oldgate, but I don't know exactly where. But if you find him, he will surely live next door. Butchers always live near their work. Could you possibly give him a message on my behalf? It just... I don't see him often and... Well, even though we know him, we aren't on friendly terms, you see? Is he bothering you, Mommy? No, Simon, not at all. That's a handsome boy you have. It's strange that he has light hair. He takes after his father. Strong, with light hair. Wait, he sounds familiar to me. A man of about 50 years old, very big, at least six feet tall and left-handed, correct? You are mistaken yet again. My husband is only 32 years old, no taller than five foot three, and he's right-handed. Clever. Obviously, there are many Levies in the area. I will leave you, and I pray that you'll excuse the disturbance. Perhaps we will have the pleasure of meeting again. Farewell, ma'am. Goodbye, sir. Dad! 
Daddy. <laughs> I must return to Baker Street. Let's go to Baker Street. Holmes, <laughs> just, <laughs> just peeping, peeping on people. Well, Watson, not looking so good. Whose fault is that, Holmes? If you hadn't shown me your masterpiece in clay. Some actions have much larger repercussions than would be assumed at first glance. Listen, Watson, in a few minutes I will leave Baker Street in order to meet Jack the Ripper and put an end to his crimes. Beforehand, I want to go over all our discoveries to assure myself that everything is clear. Jack the Ripper? You know the identity of Jack the Ripper? Without a shadow of a doubt, Watson, and I assure you that we are in possession of all the elements required to determine who Jack the Ripper is. Would you like to do this work with me? Just well, we are still missing certain information in order to finish this investigation, Watson. I was like, I'm just staring at this board. All right. The white. This is a large knife. He's a, he's a butcher. Oh. Offered a gift to each of his victims for killing them. Diverted the attention of his victims for killing. Knew each and had things in common. I think he diverted. Yeah. See the same way. Must have been accompanied. Proceed. It's not the same man who killed P. Nicholas and App Chapman. It's the same man as an accomplice. I, I know he talked about it. Was it them? No. Nope. Same man who killed as an accomplice. Not the same? Nope. Same. I remember he talked about it. Is it corpulent? Is a tall man? I mean, these are all these all seem accurate. Had an accomplice. Could not have committed these five murders. Definitely killed. Okay. Alright, what do we got? Victims each had a deformity. The Jack Ripper removed the victim's organs when he could. Lost the organs of some of his victims when he examined them. I think he, he, he took them. Hesitated. Wanted to verify. Kept going. I feel like he kept going. No? Verify? Weird way to verify the health of them, but okay. Alright, what do we got? Murder was looking for money. Was looking for something that the victim stole. A ritual. No? Bad ritual. Was looking for money or objects of value. Really? Killer is poor. Is a fetishist. Collects trophies. Trophies? Or? Of course, poverty. Uh, he's right-handed. All right. Wanted to give his last victims the appearance of syphilis. Wanted to rip the faces off his last victims. Wanted to disfigure in order to cause sensation. For some reason, syphilis. Wants us to compare him to a terminal illness. Seems like he suffers from syphilis. Was confronted. I feel like suffers? Nope. Confronted? Wants to accuse someone who lives. Has a score to settle. Wants to put the police. Perfect, Watson. Let's determine who Jack the Ripper is, Watson. Oh! Come, buddy! We have another board! <laughs> Thus, we have five suspects. Let's add the elements that correspond to each of them. Okay. Wait! We think maybe Abraham? <gasps> James Hardiman. Ooh. Okay, well, we know it's not Francis. It's most likely not Walter. Is it Jacob? It might be Jacob. There's a lot of new evidence is pointing to him. So let's see. You're you're a butcher. No one else is a butcher. Uh or Abraham poor? I don't think Francis is poor. There's a score to settle, apparently. 
I think that might be the only one, because he's cool with him. Abraham's cool. Francis, I don't think, cares. Yeah, Francis doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. Oh, come. Hold on, hold on. This is great physical force. Apparently, he's very strong. Oh, Jacob, this is not looking good. He's the only one I know that's strong. Has workman's clothes. Workman clothes. Workman clothes. You don't have workman clothes. Interesting. Okay, put put it put it back. Lives in the world ward of Allgate. God, this is. Oh, you don't live there? Okay, just him. 5-3? I don't... I don't know how much more I could put on this man. <laughs> Light color... Oh my god. Hmm. Who could it be? Alright, let's see. Was confronted with syphilis. Not too many. Okay, let me, uh, let me check something. Because this, this is, this is a lot, so. Alright, select the inventory frame icon top right, click on the deduction board, click on the thing to know the steps. Place the observation papers on the left over blank papers at the center. New frames appear. Oh, okay, we already did that, okay. Determine who Jack the Ripper is. Go to the stand at the center of the room. Place the appropriate squares from the left under the five suspects it pertains to. Alright, so apparently our boy, Tumble T, is, is a strong man. He's a, he's a very strong man. Alright. So let's see. Right-handed. Oh, that's right. Our, our boy, Beep Beep. He dealt with syphilis. Hence his children. Alright, syphilis. Right-handed. <laughs> He's poor. <gasps> that's right, he used to be a butcher. Workman clothes. Oh, he lives in Allgate? Oh. Apparently he doesn't live in Allgate. Okay, put put it back. Alright, he just has the one, he has everything. And then Abraham. Right-handed. Is poor. <gasps> Abraham also used to be a butcher. Oh, I don't remember that. Okay, he was a butcher. Wait, why does he have a score to settle? I thought he was cool with him! Well! Well, well! Jacob. It's not looking so good. And there you go, Watson. Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper. Fantastic, Holmes. And terrifying. But some aspects of this case are still unclear, at least for me. For example, Watson? Why does the man only kill prostitutes? The man kills prostitutes because he blames them for the misery of his life. He must have frequented them assiduously, and, during these nocturnal visits, he contracted syphilis, which he passed on to his spouse, and via her, at least one of his children. He is an angry man in despair following a mistake that cannot be fixed. Why does he only kill such miserable prostitutes? He never had the means to afford prostitutes of higher standing than Nichols, Chapman and the others. At one point in his life he was forced to steal to make ends meet. This indiscretion cost him dearly. He was imprisoned and exiled from his community. He had frequented low-class prostitutes, thus it was they who infected him, and they who must pay. But why did he remove the organs? To take vengeance on his own community, which rejected him, and had more success than he. 
He is a man who bore the burden of a sinister reputation, that of a thief and a madman because of his internment. So he took his vengeance in the most cowardly and horrific manner imaginable. He rubbed his knife on the uterus of a sick prostitute before using it. He passed Edow's kidney off as a veal kidney. Why did he disfigure the faces of the last two victims? Revenge yet again, Watson. This is what you did to my child. You will suffer the same fate. And the piece of apron and the message at Goulston Street? The only reason to have placed the piece of apron incriminating the message and attracting attention towards himself is that the people that Levy holds responsible for his arrest live in this building. The butchers where he committed the theft is found in Goulston Street, and the majority of the butchers who denounced him surely live close to their workplaces. But finally, Holmes, why didn't his wife or anyone else notice anything? His wife has many children and must be very busy. The man is a butcher, which must facilitate things when one is questioned by the police in the street and must justify the blood stains on oneself. Furthermore, butchers often work during the night as the meat must be sold fresh each morning. His nocturnal absences were easily justifiable. Finally, he works in a butcher's or slaughterhouses. Nothing could be more simple than slipping a kidney in here and using a knife soiled with human blood there. Yeah, so yeah. This he's... story mm -hmm. is frightful, Holmes. Indeed, Watson. Lies, infidelity, venereal disease, murder, mutilation, and finally cannibalism. A complete anthology of what humans at their most vile are capable. Let's go at once to Whitechapel and put this madman where he can do no more harm, Holmes. Let's, Watson. Oh! Yeah, so straight up, he was uh, taken taking uh, lady parts and mixing it with their food. So it's, you know, just to be like a giant reveal of like, aha, you've been eating women. I do believe we are not alone. I hope these men won't prevent us from passing. Me? No, but you, yes, Watson. Your journey ends here tonight. Pardon? You're sometimes a little hot-headed. Uh, moreover, Mr. Solomonovich has a few things to tell you. I won't be long. Holmes! I befriended them first! You can come in, Mr. Holmes. He's waiting for you inside. Everything was organized according to your instructions. I don't know how to thank you. Later, later. Dr. Watson is awaiting an explanation from you. <laughs> Make the joke. Because I don't know what's happening. So is that why you had five strong men? To keep them here? Ooh, I like the lighting. <gasps> I don't get to hear what you say? What are you saying? What are you telling him, Holmes? Obviously it's not broken, otherwise it'd be subtitles, but he's he's telling him something. He's probably revealing like how he figured it out, how he knows he's Jack the Ripper, etc. etc. Why did you move why did you move back? Why? What? What? Oh, he's recreating the murders for me. Okay. Wait, so does that mean he just has syphilis brain? Is that why he also committed murders? Nope, we're just... Okay. It's pretty ballsy to do two in one night. I'll give him that, though. Okay. So he, he felt bad about it? Okay, we're writing. More carving.
Holmes, have you the slightest idea of what you are doing? I think so, Watson. Leaving this bloodthirsty pervert at liberty and hiding his existence from the London police? What folly! What? Certainly, the police will never find their man. But with so many men deployed, this affair will indirectly have a benevolent effect on the crime in the vicinity. But Holmes, wait! Justice hasn't been served. And we are accomplices to the fact. Justice? But I don't serve justice, Watson. I serve truth. And, incidentally, I serve my country, and I don't think that I have ever served it better than today. Imagine if, after months of terror and a murder as abominable as that of Miller's Court, we deliver to the English people a man of the Jewish faith, a journeyman, and head of family as the guilty party. A man who forced members of his own people to eat human flesh. All of this contained tension would have exploded in a myriad of anti-Semitic acts which would have thrown Whitechapel into a rage of fire and blood. And this man's family, who are completely innocent and have suffered more than their lot, would have been the first in the line of sight. Should we condemn an entire people to shame and promise them a thousand wounds because one of their members committed an unmentionable crime? Neither I nor you have the right to do so. Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper, is now in the hands of his own people. I have complete faith in Mr. Solomovich and the members of his community who, I remind you, courageously helped us. They took great risks and acted with the most salutary discretion. And, oh yes, it is understood that you cannot chronicle this investigation. It would be best to invent a story that takes us far from London during the sombre period in pursuit of, let's see, something challenging, a ghostly dog that glows in the night. Don't be ridiculous, Holmes. But what will happen now? The police will endure a serious setback and a real loss of credibility. And... and this... this man? Well, a few months after the murders have ceased, the police commission, finding themselves at an impasse, will come up with a story to tell, and everyone will vow that they know the secret identity of the killer without having the right to reveal it. As for Jacob Levy, Jack the Ripper, he will be imprisoned by his own people. He will pace like a lion in its cage until the end of his days, haunted by his crimes and his insatiable vengeance, until finally the disease which drove him to kill those poor women will finish its work and make him its final victim. Yeah. Yes, he, he got syphilis brain. Up. Oh! Mary Jane Kelly was Jack the Ripper's last crime. Jacob Levi died of a general paralysis caused by syphilis. Wait, so is it really him? In the same year, the police filed away the case for good without explanation. For the general public, the mystery remained unsolved. Jack the Ripper's shadow roams forever in Whitechapel's alleys. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. And it only took about two hours. Oh, I'm so glad I did not try to finish this yesterday. I would have been so tired. I see the joke now. Eating women. Thank you. Thank you. It is pride. Thank you. Thank you. Just saying. I have to think about something for a second. But cool. I like the, uh, the mention of the the ghostly hound because i'm like that's what we're playing next so we'll let our credits roll make sure everyone gets their screen time and then we'll we'll get that <gasps> now the vororians took him away in a spaceship and turned him into an inquisitor tasked with exposing people who think themselves on a mission from god <laughs> i could buy it i believe that yeah totally 100 percent mm. no doubt in my mind my faith is absolute in this theory. Or I guess I should say fact. 
Well, well, well. There is an actual episode of a TV show that does this. No. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's it's a very creative story where they're like, what happened to him? It's like, oh, aliens took him. But but not only did they not ta just take him, they put him on a mission. From God. Or for God, I guess. Against God? Something God. Religion has evolved at some point. <laughs> bad had to use the guide here and there at some parts because math but you know solve the puzzle most of the time it's not too bad so quiet i like it it's very calm <gasps> oh the voices rick simmons david riley kyle Leslie, yeah, Roland, Martison. I wish you would tell me who was who. I know Rick is Sherlock, but I want to know who's who's who. What next? Another game that causes grooming behaviors? I would hope not because it's the hound one. So I hope it wouldn't. I mean, we had mild gremlin at the beginning when they were like, I gave him the tip and he's like, the tip? He's like, yeah, the whole tip. And I'm just like, I. So. Okay, we'll try not to hound you. <laughs> See? It's our... There'd definitely be some puns. This is not a dog. It's a hound. Which... It's such, such a... Such a word. Not a puppy. Not a dog. Not a scary dog. Or big dog. A hound. We would like to thank our fans and players. Without you, we won't be here today. Gary G, who missed his last... Saving throw. R.I.P. The first DM, he taught us to roll the dice. He opened the door to new worlds. Wait, like, Gary Gygax? Like, D&D &D creator? And Alexis that have been constantly helping us on our work. And all the game boomers. Focus team always supporting us in all situations. Da -da -da. Important notice, the character and events in the game are based on one of many the theories of who Jack the Ripper really was. Okay. This game is based on theory rather than fact. The views expressed in this game are not those of its developer, publisher, manufacturer, any licensee, licensor, any person involved with the game, nor representation or warranty is given concerning the accuracy of any information in this game. All reference to persons living or dead and their acts and related events is theoretical and coincidental and should not be taken as fact. This game is not endorsed by or associated with any third party, author, character, company, film, game, books, or other works, all trademarks and their property of their respective owners. Lena got the whole tip. I got no tip. Did you see any opals? Did you see any cash flow? Because I didn't. Tell me I got that tip. I know what you're implying, but I'm turning that joke on its head. But it's... Here's the collective sigh of relief from some lawyers. They're just like, just like gripping. They're like, oh. Oh, they gave a disclaimer. It's fine. I'm in the darkness. With, with a knife. <laughs> I like it. It can disappear over here, but it can't disappear on this side. Ooh, hold on. It goes down, though. Do, do, I, need, do I need to click? Ah! You click and you're out of the darkness. There we go. And we'll save. Just... Just because. Can I save? I can't save. I can't save. Anyway. Get the next game for you. One second. <laughs>